Hey guys, Tim here with Two Feather Survival. We're in the beautiful Smoky Mountains in the state of North Carolina. Brought with me my Scout Woodsman. Uh, so what I would like to do is delve in a little bit deeper with this, show you how this sheath is set up, show you how to do some basic knife uh, skills videos, how to do some basic cuts, how to sharpen the blade, how to also use the spear point that's included with this kit. And I've added in the Habilis uh, fire rod, which I'm really enjoying. And then also show you some of the things that you can keep in the tin. That way you can help with uh, increase your chances of survivability or sustainability. So stay with me. We'll get started right after this. Hey guys, don't forget there are many ways to visit Two Feathers Survival. You can have blade discussions, talk about wild plants. You can visit us on our website at www.twofeathersurvival.com. Our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, where we post many videos on many different topics involving survival, long-term survivability, blade discussions, and various other topics. Experience the outdoors together with us. Learn some lost arts that you and your family can share and enjoy in the woods. Okay guys, what we're going to talk about today, uh, this video is really way overdue. I'm going to talk about a few different knife grips. Um, I have the uh, Scout Woodsman here on my side. Get that off. Bring out just the blade. And this is the standard length Scout Woodsman five and three quarter inch blade. So we're going to talk about basic cuts with a knife. So there are some basic grips that we have to explore with a knife like this. Um, the first one that we're going to look at is a standard standard grip. I've got the handle, got the finger trail here, and I also have the jimping along the back of the blade that I can use as a uh, kind of a tactile reminder for my thumb. So I can kind of choke up on the blade here if I have to. This is going to give me some better fine control if I wanted to do some fine carving. So that's kind of the, the typical uh, carving style uh, of a grip, just a standard board grip. The other thing I can do is I can reverse this. So now if I do a chest lever type of a cutting action, I've got the blade pointed back towards my hand, towards the webbing of my hand, and that will give me some power as I rip a cut out this way. That is simply just the reverse of the forward cutting grip. So in the forward cutting grip, I hold my arm parallel here, the web of my hand is at the back of the spine. The blade is pointing away this way. The reverse of that, I'm going to turn the blade back this way. Now the spine is pointing where the blade just was, and I've got the edge part of the knife back towards the web of my hand. This will help me using a chest lever style of a grip. The other grip that we can talk about is inverting the blade this way. Very, very important to remember with this style of grip, I don't want to have my thumb along the side of the knife because if I hit something hard and I slip, that takes me right down along the edge of the blade. That's not a good thing. So as what I want to do here, this thumb, is going to wrap up along the back of the knife. That way if I do cut down into something, the blade's not going to slide out of my hand. So very important thing to remember. Knife fighting, with this type of a, of a grip, you're going to want to make sure that that thumb is up there and then position the blade however it is that you're looking for a, uh, an inverted style grip. So we looked at a forward, a reverse, and now an inverted style of a grip. This is more of a combat type action, more of a knife fighting action grip. For okay, the just as a quick review, web of the hand grabs the traditional fashion of the knife for a forward cutting grip. Got the jimping here, that way we can get into closer fine work. If I wanted to choke up some on the blade, I can. If I wanted to drop back down some here and not worry about the jimping, I'm also good there as well. So that is a basic forward cutting action. Reverse of that, that's all I'm going to do, turn the blade around backwards, webbing of the hand, grabs the back side of the, or the what would be the underside of the handle, fingers wrap along the traditional back of the knife. 
now I have a way to get some more power with the cutting, which is going to be a chest lever type cutting uh, stroke that we're going to use, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit a later video. So again, forward, forward cutting. The reverse of that, reverse grip. The other way that we can do this is an inverted grip, okay? Making very sure that the thumb wraps over the back of the knife so as I cut down, I've got a way to stop the blade from shooting up into my hand. If I grab like this with my hand just wrapped around the knife and not over the top, if I were to cut down into something hard and my hand were to slip if I'm sweaty, now I've just run the hand down the entire length of the cutting edge of the knife and now I have a mechanical injury on my hand and that is something that I want to avoid at all costs that's that's definitely a big no-no so thumb back side of the knife now I've got a way to do an, what's called an inverted style grip and this can be a, a forward or a reverse inverted grip as well and both of these are going to be accomplished by placing the thumb over the back of the the knife something else that I want to mention long as we're in here kind of close the back edge of this knife, this can be used as a window punch. You can use it as a pry if you need to. This is hardened. So keep that in mind as you're out here playing around with these different skill sets. Chopping. Hand goes through. I take the knife. I rotate that in just a little bit. And take up some of that slack. That allows my hand to come way down on the handle of the knife. And now I've got a nice chopping action. To take out bigger pieces of uh, to take out bigger pieces of uh, a tree if we need to. A bit of a spot to sit down here. Cutting. I don't want to be cutting down here through this area. This is what's commonly referred to as a triangle of death. I've got my femoral artery. Uh, a lot of easy ways to bleed out fast. I get a small cut there. Or or a deep cut, whichever the case is. At any rate, if I lacerate the femoral artery, it's not going to be long for me to bleed out. Okay, so I don't want to be cutting like this down here into this area. So what I can do, come off here to the side, keep the knife away from the classic triangle of death, and now I can cut away from my body with no chance of having some version of a mechanical injury. And now I can take and sharpen a stick or make a spoon or whatever it is that I need to do that day with the knife okay so very very important I can also take and lock in the knife making my arm kind of stiff and I can start pulling the piece of wood that I want to carve back and now this way I'm not moving the knife at all I'm moving the item that I'm trying to cut so a couple easy ways to do that some things to really think about and to consider about. The other one is the chest lever style grip. So again, take and I run the knife in a reverse fashion. And if I want to get off large portions of a stick, I'm using now my back muscles to pry off all of this material from the stick. So one more time, I take, lock my arm out, get out here away from my triangle, I can keep this blade still, and I can take off fairly large portions of a stick that I'm looking to carve down for whatever purpose it is that I'm looking to do, either to make a tent stake, or make a spoon, or if I'm looking to make a feather stick, again, I can keep all this locked out, and start getting these little shavings off from the piece of material that I'm looking to make the feather stick with. If it's just I'm looking to just carve a steak, no problem. I've got all this ability to do that out here. Keeping this arm out here, and this way I'm not doing one of these fashions where I'm now jeopardizing myself with me possible mechanical injury. Something that we definitely don't want to do. We want to minimize those opportunities whenever we can. And that way we're not doing something that causes us to make an injury or bleed or any of that nature. All right, so again, chest lever grip. Not using a forward cutting action, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and reverse this cut. Mosquitoes are pretty thick out here today. 
this knife comes up here and I'm actually not using the arm muscles but as well I'm using is my back muscles so this isn't allowing me to pull my back together and make kind of an explosive cut to get out large portions of material so I'm using the back muscles to do this notice too I'm not cutting back this way but the blade is actually moving out and away from my body chest lever grip okay get some good powerful cuts in this and as you can see getting some large material off this piece of uh, piece of pine that's here in my hand at this time I can do the same thing here moving out and away from my body but as you see these cuts that I'm getting off are nowhere as near the amount of material as you can get utilizing chest lever action get the blade in using my back muscles and I'm pulling this off okay pulling all this off so batoning have the blade got some uh, ground here with some roots sticking out so I've got somewhat of a base to put this on so I get the knife down into this piece of material secondary stick is what I'm going to use to baton this knife through that and this should just get me straight down through that piece of material this way I can take a larger piece of material like this piece of pine and process it down for smaller sticks that way I can use it for fire lighting make larger fuel into smaller fuel So again, batoning, just get your material started, knife comes into the top, your baton, another piece of wood, what I'm going to do is hit the back of the spine of the blade, driving that knife down through the piece of material that I'm looking to baton. straightforward. Batoning's uh, easily accomplished. Next thing we're going to look at is notch cuts and uh, what they're going to be used for and that will get us started into our trapping series, our survival trapping series, and you're going to need to know how to make some of those type of cuts. Stop cut, notch cut, those type of things, uh, and that will get you into that. So that's a look at some of the basic knife skills that I've I've been talking about and kind of been showing you guys on the Facebook channel and that will get you started with some of the the things that you can do with knives in the woods the thing that you got to remember the most is simply be careful you don't have a lot of opportunities in the woods uh, once you've messed something up now, what do I mean by mess something up well you've gone and cut your finger deep or you have cut in deep into an artery the chances of infection setting in the chances of you possibly bleeding out are all very, very great. Infection is going to be your big enemy in the woods because of not easily accessible to medicines. If you know some of the plants to choose from, well, you might be able to help out a little bit, but still, might not. So be careful. Don't do anything fast. Small things that are calculated are better to go with. Thank you.